Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today, let's talk about African studies. Let me adjust the camera a bit. Okay. If you're interested in this rug, you've probably seen it in a few of my videos. I will put a link in the description box that tells you where I got this specific rug from. Um, I use it for my toddler learning with my daughter and when my son gets of age, you know, him too. It has the letters and it has the days of the week and it also has the months of the year and seasons. But again, I will link that in the description box below. But again, back to African studies. Within our homeschool journey, I mentioned in a few videos that a part of our social studies includes African American history within the United States and the Caribbean. That's part of our social studies and we're going to learn about various topics through U.S. history. Okay, so our U.S. history and African American history, again, within the U.S. and Caribbean will be learned together using a timeline approach. I do have a video. I will put it in the description box below where I go over our U.S. history and what we're doing this year and throughout our middle school year for my son. Um, as I also mentioned before, our African studies is centered around, around the continent of Africa. We're going to study that continent specifically to include politics, culture, religion, human and world geography, and everything in between. To do that, I am using um, two basic curriculum and I have some resources that we will tag along. I mentioned before Classical Africa. So Classical Africa is the um, is one of the curriculums or curricula that we are using just to talk about all things Africa. Let me show you the table of contents. I did get this from Amazon. I had to um, wait quite a while in order to get this for a reasonable price. So if you can find it for, I would say, 30, 40 bucks or under, I think that's a pretty good deal. Um, being that the book is out of print thus far in 2019 to date, um, I have not seen or heard anything um, for this particular book in terms of writing a new edition or bringing it back to print. So this book has, let's see how many units, seven. This book has seven units. The first unit is Africa, the early civilizations, center yourself. So this will talk about the beginnings of Africa, the Nile River, the rise of Egypt, um, Kemet and the black land, Egyptian culture and religion. Inclusive within this book is a lot of critical thinking. They do ask questions throughout the book. And there is also a companion guide that goes along with this that provides activities. And I think they provide a few tests or quizzes or questions um, along with those answers. I did not invest in that companion because I was unable to find it. I was unable to find it for a reasonable price. Currently, if you can find it, I want to say it's going for 50, 60, 70, 100, 200 dollars. Again, that's because the book is out of print. Um, it is in high, high demand. So if you can find it for 40 bucks or below, go ahead and snag it. Same thing with this book. If you can find it for a reasonable price, go ahead and get it. It's a great foundational piece that you can have within your homeschool. Whether or not you are homeschooling or after schooling, I think this is a great book that provides you um, a firm foundation in all things Africa. And it gets your um, taste buds a little wet, right? It just allows you to dive in a little bit to learn um, a lot 
about the continent and a lot of the religions and a lot of the culture and a lot of other important topics that our children and you yourself may have never learned or will not learn unless you dive into a book like this that is centered around who you are, where you come from, the origins, the beginnings, and how everything transpired to be what it is today. So I think this book gives a great foundation for that. Unit two dives again into science and art in terms of um, African culture. It continues with Egypt. And again, it has a lot of critical thinking throughout the book itself. Unit three goes into Nubia. Unit four talks about the gem of Africa. Unit five talks about Ghana, the kingdom of ivory and gold. Unit six, Mali. Unit seven, Songhai. So of course it also dives into the West African um, kingdoms and talks to you about um, key persons that you may have heard about in history, but may have not had the opportunity to dive into and learn more about. So again, like I said earlier, this book is a great foundational piece that you can have within your home that not only presents factual information and evidence, but it also asks questions throughout the process of reading so that you can have a little bit of critical thinking and analysis going on as you are reading to your children, they're reading for themselves, or you're just diving into discussion. Let's look at a random chapter. I'm just gonna go into unit two. And every unit um, you know, begins the same way. Where it introduces the unit, lays out a little bit of information of what you can expect to learn. And in many cases, it provides a picture along with information about that picture. So you can actually do a little bit of um, picture study using this book as well. Every chapter has vocabulary words that you can have your children, you know, um, do the basic vocabulary type actions such as writing them down, finding the definition, the part of speech, throw in a little bit of language arts, you know, and then you can also have them utilize it within a sentence centered around what they're currently learning or centered around what they are reading within this book. Then the book dives into the topic itself. This book is not hard to read. I think this is great for a middle schooler, a high schooler. It's again, easy to read. And it's also easy to understand. It also, again, has some additional pictures there for you. And this is also a great opportunity for you to use this book to dive into additional topics that you can find on the internet, of course, using um, primary resources. And you can also utilize this book to dive into additional topics that you can um, watch via documentaries on Netflix. You can Google documentaries. You can watch different, um, um, different documentaries on PBS. PBS has a website that sells so much, um, um, items in terms of DVDs, CDs, and so forth that you guys can watch as a family and listen to as a family. So here we have a little table here that talks about the different dynasties. And it continues on. At the end of every chapter, you have your critical thinking here. All the information that's found um, or all the questions that they ask can be pulled from the chapter. Um, you may have to do a little analysis, a little synthesis um, when in terms of coming up with the answer. But if you're reading this with the student or your child 
and you're asking them the questions by having a dialogue and not treating it like a test or a quiz or anything, but use this book as an opportunity to open up discussion about topics that the child may not learn about in school and also use it as an opportunity to just have dialogue with the children, talk through the answers, and then you can utilize the resources I just mentioned to go in a little further and a little deeper about the topic at hand, okay? At the end of every unit, I'll just flip through as I'm talking. At the end of every unit, you also have a summary, okay? So what we do with those summaries, I will just have my son read through the summary and maybe write out a few key points that he remembers from the entire unit or each chapter and also some information that he's found in that review at the end of the unit and just write them down along with some key terms that he does not want to forget. Just as, I'm sorry, it's, it's just used for additional learning. Here is then an example of a unit review. Again, it gives you an example or it writes out Everything you've learned about in that particular unit, every unit may have a set of chapters, maybe three chapters as an example. And it also tells you what pages they can find this particular information. You can also, if you're interested in doing quizzes or tests for your students or your children, you can also use the unit summary for just that. You can read through this here and come up with various sets of questions or essays that you can have them um, talk about or discuss in writing or verbally recording themselves or presenting the information to you. It also has some personal writing opportunities as well for reflection and testimony, okay? And again, the next chapter, same thing, brief summary. It gives you a picture. Again, you can use that for picture study. It explains what the picture is all about. You can find those pictures online in color if you so choose. It has vocabulary words. And it dives into the topic at hand. So we really like this book. Um, as you may already know, our African studies will span throughout middle and high school. So the things that we're talking about throughout middle school, we are going to bring those things back up in high school along with new topics and do a little bit of application with those topics um, just so that my son can have a firm foundation in all things Africa. And also he'll be able to utilize his critical thinking skills as they are more fine tuned and developed as he matures and gets older from now being in sixth grade all the way through um, exiting high school. Along with Classical Africa, another book that we have that we're using for African studies is this book here, When We Ruled, okay? And this is the companion guide, the study guide reading plan that goes along with that. So with this book here, it is extremely detailed. And you can use this book here along with Classical Africa or just this book here in order to create and develop your own curriculum for African studies. We're starting from the beginning and moving right along. So we're kind of using a timeline approach. And as we're learning about different things in world history and U.S. history, depending on where we are in the timeline, we're then going to link things together as we are learning. OK, again, that's going to take place throughout the rest of my son's matriculation within our homeschool. And if for some reason he decides to go back to public school and we're all good with that because life happens, then this is something we're going to continue to do via after schooling. So let me show you the table of contents for when we ruled. 
It gives you an introduction. Chapter one talks about what is black history, talks about North Africa, West Africa, Ethiopia, Southern Africa, and the East African coast. Dives into chapter two, and it goes into various documents that have been found and dive and dives into detail about those particular documents and what they actually mean. Then it goes into black women, the daughters of Lucy, the Nile River, Ethiopia, North Africa, Western and Central Sahara, the West African coast. So the focus again is on black women, African women. And then we talk about chapter four, the land of the blacks. And then chapter five goes into the human race, the origin of the human race, okay? And early human culture. And then we dive into the history of the Nile River, um, and then we're in chapter seven. We're talking again about the history of the Nile River, various civilizations that occurred around that, the um, old Egypt, Kush. We're talking about middle Egypt. We're talking about new Egypt and things of that nature. And then we're going to talk about the chronology of Egypt itself. We're going to continue and talk about the West African coast the golden age, a lot of these topics um, will be dived into as my son goes into high school. Um, in middle school, our focus is going to be on um, West Africa, Egypt, and um, all of those hot topics that many students learn throughout elementary and middle school, but we're not going to shy away from those other more controversial topics or those topics of truth that um, my husband and I want our son to know. We're also going to be learning beside my son. He's not the only one that's going to be edified and enlightened. We are as well as the parents because a lot of this stuff we do not know. We did not know. We did not learn. So we're using this as an opportunity to edify ourselves as adults so that we can understand the truth. We can know um, the information that are that, that, that has been hidden in books that we had no idea about. Okay, so that's the beauty of homeschooling and after schooling as well. You can learn right beside your kiddos. And then we're diving into chapter 13, the Moors. Then it goes into Sahara. And then we go into the Swahili states, and then we're going into the mid um, medieval Nubia, Southern Africa, talking about the various empires, talking about Great Zimbabwe. Then we're going to talk about the fall of Africa and the resistance, and this is where it goes into slavery. So chapter 18 um, goes into slavery. So as you can see, prior to, this is all things pre-colonization, okay? And then we start talking about colonization. And then we go into Sumer, and then we go into um, Arabia and the Indus Valley. And then we talk about where do we go from here, okay? The reading level for this is definitely high school. Um, I would absolutely say the reading level is definitely high school and maybe even college level reading. However, um, we're using this again throughout the remaining of my, my son's, you know, matriculation through his education from middle school and high school. And hopefully he'll go beyond that and, and continue his um, edification for himself so that, you know, he can um, experience the truth and learn the truth and share the truth. And when he has his family require his sons and daughters to do the same. But the reading level, like I said, definitely high school, maybe even college. Some of the information in here, um, you may have to, as parent, teacher, you may have to research it yourself and figure out how to pronounce words. You definitely do not want to give this to your child and say, here, read, and here are some questions. In my opinion, um, in a middle school, high school setting, you're going to lose the, the, the point and the intent of what I hope you're trying to do. This is the kind of book that you want to read to the child, read together. Of course, you can have them do the reading, 
but you need to dive into discussion with them and talk about what was read, talk about the meanings, look up words, um, figure out the inferences and things of that nature. Okay, it also has lots of pictures in the book, so you can also do picture study as well. Okay. And then also within the book, it refers you to other writings. And if you're interested, you can also use that as an opportunity to go ahead and um, continue your research. This book is actually very well written from what I have um, perused thus far. And let me also explain to you. We are not reading this book in order, okay? So as an example, we are um, discussing Egypt, okay? So as you know, for our world history, we're doing ancient times. So we are in Egypt. So in discussing Egypt, classical Africa discusses Egypt. So we read from here and answer questions and have dialogue. We read from that ancient times book that you guys have seen in my world history video that I will also include in the description box. And based on the topic at hand, I'll also discuss items from this book. So if we're discussing Egypt, right, and we've already discussed Songhai, well, the whole Western um, kingdoms and empires. So from, you know, Mali, Songhai, Ghana, we've discussed all that and we discussed the Nile river. So based on those discussions, I go into this book and I look at various topics for those talking points. And we will read from this book and it basically just confirms everything that we're reading. And it also dives a lot deeper into topics that I wouldn't have even thought about bringing up. Now, with that said, this book, I think the intent of this book is to actually go in order because everything kind of picks up from what you last read in the previous chapter. However, it's okay to go out of sequence. With that being said, although we are going out of sequence currently, in my opinion, throughout the middle school year, once we get in high school and we go ahead and um, cycle back through these things, I am going to read this in order with my son um, in high school because I get I think it gives you a different perspective um, when you read it in order but it also for like a middle schooler it's okay to go out of sequence in order to help um, build upon whatever you're teaching them from whatever other curricula that you're using I hope that makes sense so let me just show you a chapter Chapters are long, by the way. So this is chapter four, Land of the Blacks, the peopling of ancient Egypt. Okay. So the chapter just provides lots of information, facts, evidence. Okay. This is a book written by scholars. So it's going to read like a scholarly type book. Okay. Okay. A lot of the information and names that it's using throughout the book will allow you to have the opportunity to, like I said, research further, okay? You can do mapping. You can, um, again, find other resources to help you. Within the notes section here, they give you other books that they've used in order to gather the facts and evidence and details that they present within each chapter. So this is another way that you can, um, or another method that you can use to find additional books to help further enhance your African studies. Okay, and then it goes to chapter five. This study guide here is I think necessary for this book because if you just take this book and you just read it, I think it's it's just a bit much. It's a lot. This guide here 
what it will do is it will break everything down for you. Now it gives you, again, this is a college level book. So in an African studies course somewhere at some college or university, they're using this and they're telling them on day one, this is what you read. On day two, on day five, this is what you read. You know, and I think this goes all the way up to day... Let me say, let me say, day 60. So this is supposed to be done in like a semester type class. That's a lot of information to absorb in a college class, in my opinion. However, please don't do that for your middle school, high school student. Take years to complete a course like this. Break it out in pieces, okay? So this says day one. Our day one might be month one. Our day one might be week one or week one and two. It just depends on the, your schedule, depends on what else you're doing. It depends on how deep you want to dive into it. It depends on what other resources and curricula you're using to enhance what they're learning. It totally depends, for us, I would say day one for us would be more like week one through three, okay? That's how slow we're taking it, bite-sized pieces. So it gives you instructions. It tells you what to read and to study the map. And then it asks you questions. So here are the types of questions that they're asking you to have the student discuss. Again, I am doing this verbally with my son and I have not determined whether or not I want to do quizzes or tests. More than likely, I will not for African studies because I'm not trying to teach it to him in that format. I want it to be a lifelong learning opportunity and I just want it to be a time where we are just having good discussion. Now, at the end of each semester, you know, um, or at the end of the year, he, he will have an African studies exam where I will pull out questions from this book based on what we have done, what we've dived into the most, based on what he was most interested in. And I will have him write an essay and probably read that essay aloud, rec recording himself and doing some type of PowerPoint presentation of some sort based on that particular essay that will pull in various topics. Yeah, that's something I will probably do at the end. Okay. Let me give you another chapter. This is day two. It tells you what pages to read. It gives you some questions. And this is just basically how it goes throughout the entire book. Okay, it just gives you what to read, what to study, questions to answer, and that's it. At the end of the book, it also talks about four specific, 42 specific themes in African history. And they are actually going through those various themes through this course. So for example, theme one. They want you to understand the theories and, and documentation of black or African history. So to understand that theme and to make sure you've captured all the points under that, it tells you what to read, what pages to go to. And it also gives you some additional books and some additional readings that you can choose to invest and dive into. Theme two, understanding the human origins. Same thing, what to read in this in this book here and gives you recommendations of other books you can read to further enhance your studies in that area. And this is again why I say it's really important to break this out in pieces and take your time. There is no rush. You can even start this as early as elementary school, not reading in the book to them but maybe reading it to yourself, pulling out concepts, pulling out ideas, creating activities, Googling, researching, using Pinterest, using Netflix to dive into particular topics that are age appropriate and also based on the child's reading level and their maturity level. So it goes into that. 
Then it also goes into a summary of facts of African history. So then it goes into 100 facts. And these are some things that you can have your child memorize. Use this as copy work. Use this as sentence dictation. Use this as memory work if you so choose to. You can also pull if you want to do quizzes or tests or whatever. You can pull from this area of the book. And then it talks about the writer of this book, who, um, which is Robin Walker. It also gives you a list of all other books that the person has written and lectures they have made. And it gives you the resources in terms of where you can go and buy that information or where you can go get that information. Okay, So this book, again, is excellent. This is a truth telling curriculum that tells you everything you need to know if you need to buy one thing to create your own african studies boom guys here you go this is actually pretty good there are other resources out there that i found on amazon but i found this for me and for my purpose and for what i'm trying to do to be the most comprehensive that pulls in a bit of everything that I want to know myself and that I want my children to know. Here are some other resources that I found. Caribbean history. Again, this will all be in the description box below. So this is from pre-colonization to present time. This talks about the history, the African history of the Caribbean. So I think this is an excellent book. I started to read this. It talks about Columbus and the truth about Columbus. The truth about Columbus. Okay, so it starts from that point. Let me show you the table of contents. So in this book, it talks about the islands, the First Nations. Chapter 2 goes into the coming of Columbus talks about the truth about Columbus before he got there, his first encounter, his various voyages, the four voyages. It talks about the genocide and the slavery that took place. And it dives into the Caribbean resistance, the Colombian exchange. This book works beautifully with U.S. history, world history, African history, African-American history, um, um, Caribbean studies. This book is excellent. I think this book is a must have within your, um, arsenal as well. Chapter three goes into the Northern European challenge to Spain. Okay. It goes into, um, chapter four, the Africans, the long night of enslavement, the middle passage, Life of an enslaved um, person, sexual exploitation, um, enslaved women. Chapter five, it continues to talk about humans being um, in savage surroundings. What did life look like at that time? Then it continues with um, early Spanish, um, um, the early Spanish period. Then it goes into... Um, the surname and Jamaica talks about the Maroons, talks about the Haitian Revolution, goes into missionaries, abolitionists, um, capitalism with slavery, um, emancipation, what took place after emancipation, what were the obstacles and was it really progress? What did that look like? Then we go into immigration, the Chinese, Caribbean in, um, immigrants, Africans, African-Americans, Indians, Europeans, Portuguese, Jews, Lebanese, and Syrians. And then it compares the immigration between all those that I just named. And then we go into the 20th century to World War II. And then we go from World War II, World War II, to the century's end, okay? So I think, again, this is a fantastic book to have in your arsenal. Um, if you're teaching U.S. history, African studies, African-American studies, Caribbean studies, this is something you also want to include that will just do nothing more than enhance whatever you're teaching within your um, homeschool or after-schooling journey. 
Again, although you see a lot of resources in my videos, I'm not telling my son, hey, here's the book, read these chapters, answer these questions, boom, pop quiz. We're not doing that. I want to stress again, we have discussions. Discussion doesn't happen every week and discussion about these things do not happen every day, okay? My goal is to touch on a topic or continue discussion of a topic at least once a week. We better get to it at least once every two weeks. However, this is a journey that we're taking from middle school all the way throughout high school. So guys, we have what, uh, seven years to complete all things you see? So take your time, no rush, enjoy the journey, enjoy the learning experience, watch documentaries, draw about what you're learning, paint about what you're learning. If you have the opportunity to travel, travel and visit to put things into perspective. It's, it's guys, I'm finding out that learning about all things history, regardless of ethnicity, culture, background, race, I am really finding that learning about history is such a wonderful thing. And when you can find pieces that provide um, truth about various things from the perspective of the conquered, from the perspective not only of those who conquered those particular areas, religions, races, cultures, but from the perspective of those who are on the other side, from the perspective and the lens and the viewpoint of those who were on the receiving end <laughs> of the battles and wars and hardships and, arc and, and, and obstacles and inhumane activity. When you look at it from their perspective, you see things completely different, differently. And that's what I want to hone in within our journey of learning. I want to look at those things from various lenses, various perspectives, so we can come up with our own truths, our own reasons as to what happened, why it happened, and not rely on the information that's provided by the conqueror. Because if you do it that way, you will be very, very narrow-minded and biased in all things history. So food for thought. Let's look at a chapter. So let's look at a chapter. Okay, so this is chapter three. I'm showing you the Northern European challenge to Spain. The reading level, definitely high school. Okay, definitely high school for this reading level. But again, that doesn't mean your middle schooler can't read it and doesn't mean you can't read it and have discussion. You may need a dictionary. You may have to um, Google how to pronounce certain words. You may have to further research what you're learning or what you're discussing, but the reading level is definitely high school, but it doesn't mean a middle schooler can't read it. They can absolutely read it and use it as a way to challenge their reading as well. Okay. So I'm just showing you. So the print is kind of small, but it's okay. Not as small as, um, the other one that I just showed you. So the information is just factual information with evidence, things that you can put side by side with whatever curricula that you're using. And that's how I also like to do it. When I'm learning something from a, t from a particular book and I go back to my... Um, my spine of what I'm using to create whatever lesson plans that I have or whatever spine I'm using to create the talking points or the unit studies, I always compare whatever I'm reading because the assumption is if the information is factual and true, they should be. That gives us a light bulb or aha moment to dive into, dive, dive into it deeper. And I love reading information that is written from various perspectives so that when you read them alongside, as an example, if we're talking about the Nile River in Egypt and we're talking about, as an example, one of the Western empires or kingdoms, right, from three different books, depending on if it's a European-centered book, if it's an African-centered book, or if it's a book that 
um, is biased or, or, or is very watered down or in the middle or whatever. When we read it from three different lenses or a few lenses, we can kind of put it together and say, wow, look how they've interpreted that portion of history. Or look how he or she interpreted that portion of history. And then we dive into, well, who actually wrote this? Oh, maybe that's why they wrote it from that perspective. Well, what do we think? Let's walk about, let's watch a documentary. Let's read um, a piece of literature um, about that particular topic. Let's go to the library or whatever it is. Then we're able to put the pieces of the puzzle together and determine if there are biases, if there are untruths, why, and those particular things. So I actually love doing that compare and contrast type of stuff. Okay, we're continuing on with the chapter. You know, I would not allow my son to see a picture like that because it's provocative, so I would cover it up. But if there, um, if you don't have a problem with that, you can have the child look at it, do a picture study, understand why that picture is like that, what was happening around that time, and, and things of that nature. Okay. So the chapters are pretty long, so it may take us a few, um, a, a few days to read through this, or a few lessons to get through that. Okay. And then it gives you some further reading. So if you want to continue your understanding of the topic, or you just want to know where they found their research in writing this particular chapter, then this is where you can go, okay, to do those things. And then it goes to the next chapter, okay? So let me show you another book that we use for African studies and also African American studies. So this here will help us not only with African studies, but with U.S. studies and African American history within the United States. So the first unit is what I would use for African studies. And then once I do my African American history book in the United States, I will more than likely bring this book back up. But it talks about the map, what was happening. So it gives you a visual. Okay. So I would say this book here is great for additional research. It's great to use as a side piece or resource to further enhance or to verify what you're learning for that particular topic. Okay. So it, it's basically going into various maps. So it's looking at maps and providing you the political history of what took place, giving you a visual so you can understand what you're reading in all those other books. And when they're saying something happened from this location to that location, or someone conquered this location and these two merged or whatever happened in history, this is giving you a visual of what that looks like as it took place um, from the origin all the way through today, okay? Or the present time, whenever this book was written, okay? So this, is a, this book here is a great resource to help you visualize and see clearly what it looked like in terms of what was taking place in African American and African history and politics. I think it's an important resource. It's 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 a wonderful piece. It's a hidden gem in my opinion to help you further understand um, you know, black history. Some videos that we will um, use for African studies. We love who was book. So once we're talking about, you know, South Africa, we'll dive into Nelson Mandela, um, Massa Musa, the Mali Empire. So this book here, I will, um, you know, we'll read together. Those are just some resources that we have. In addition to that, I'm going to do another video on another online curriculum, free curriculum that we use for African studies. 
It's through a university and they provide this information free of charge. And we're also using um, that resource for our African studies journey throughout middle and high school. So I will, you know, do a quick video on what that is as well. So I hope, oops, sorry. I hope you enjoyed the video. I know it's super long, about 45 minutes, but hey, you guys waited for a long time. Hopefully I served you something of benefit and you'll invest your time and money and resource into these types of resources if you find um, it to be beneficial. As always, guys, be blessed and make it a great, great day.